something called garganelli, and it translates to small esophagus. I know it doesn't sound good, but when you see it and taste it, you'll know that it's absolutely fabulous. And I want to start out by making a sauce for it. So we're going to be making an asparagus sauce. And here I have just about a pound of fresh asparagus. I'm going to cut these up into thirds. So let's cut them up. So in a pot of boiling water, and you want a lot of water for this so that the acids in the asparagus truly leach out and do not discolor the asparagus, you want to put some salt, about a tablespoon of salt, and then take all of your asparagus and put them in, and you want to cook these until they are just al dente. And then for it, to flavor them, we want to have some prosciutto. So in this pan, oh, I've got a quarter of a cup of prosciutto that we've diced up and just cooked in about one tablespoon of butter. And I want that to get crispy. And after the asparagus are cooked, I'm going to put this in the pan with the prosciutto, and then we'll add some other ingredients. So we'll let that go while we talk about the pasta part of this. So you want to start out with three eggs and, oh, about two or two and a half tablespoons of grated parmigiano reggiano. And then a grating of nutmeg has a little nutmeg in the dough as well. Because if we were making just a regular homemade pasta, we would be using just unbleached all-purpose flour and eggs and a little bit of salt, and that would be it. But this has cheese and the nutmeg in the dough. So you whirl all of that up, and then you have some unbleached flour ready. And how much flour will three eggs take? I have no idea. It all depends. So you want to start out by putting the flour in gradually. This is about two and a quarter cups of flour. So we'll start out and put some of it in. And what you want to achieve here is a ball of dough that goes around the blade. And I know that that's not enough, so I have to continue putting in flour. Normally, the rule I use is one large egg to about three quarters of a cup of flour. So let it go around the blade and then you'll, when it starts to become a ball, like that, you know that you can now take it out. So I take a little bit of flour on my wooden board and I just knead this. And I know this is perfect. I don't need to add any more flour. It's nice and soft and malleable. It's not hard to roll. But now we need to relax the gluten in that dough. We need to relax it so that it's going to make it easier for us to roll. So after you get it into a ball of dough and nothing is sticking to your hands, you want to put this aside and let it rest for about 30 minutes. Take a knife and go into the stem. And if it goes in very easily, you know that that's cooked. You don't want to overcook that. I'm going to turn this down now. And I'm going to take the asparagus out. So we can turn that one off. And I'm just going to drain them into this pan with the prosciutto. This is going to give great flavor to this. And this is just one type of sauce that you can make for garganelli, you could also make a tomato sauce for it. And now we just stir this around. And I'm going to turn the heat down on this now. And we want to add the other ingredients to our sauce because now you see the prosciutto is nice and crispy, the asparagus are beautifully green, and we're going to add some cream. So turn the heat way down because you don't want to curdle the cream as you put this in. This is about one and a third cups of heavy cream. Just stir that around and then we're going to add again that wonderful parmigiano reggiano cheese. Here's a half a cup of parmigiano reggiano and of course we have to give this a little salt. Not too much because we have salt in the cheese and that's all there is to this sauce. So you stir this and allow this to melt that cheese, and then keep it warm, and when your pasta is ready, you are ready to serve this as your primo piatto. Here's our pasta. 
let's cut this up and work with it in small pieces. I want to work in small pieces. I usually cut it up into four pieces. Keep the pieces covered that you're not working with and work with one small piece at a time. So now we need to flatten this down. And then you get out your trusty matterello. Every kitchen should have one of these. And you flatten down the sheet of pasta. Flatten it down. If it seems a little tacky, you can always add a little bit of flour. Now we go to our pasta machine. I like to start out on two. Then I move the notch up. I want this thin enough so that I can see my hand underneath the sheet of dough. And I think that will be thin enough. And now you see what I mean by being able to see your hand behind the sheet of pasta. And now, what do we do with this? Well, again, we want to start out with a little bit of flour on our board. You don't want this to stick. And then you can work with a small cutter. And to make the garganelli, you're going to need either a clean, unused comb, or you can go to the store and get one of these. This is just a butter paddle. You can find them in antique stores. Here's an old one I've had in my collection for a long time. I also use this to run gnocchi along. So you can use this, or this, a new butter paddle, or you could use a clean comb. And you take a small cookie cutter, a square one, and this is a two-incher. You give it a little flour, and you cut out squares, just like this. Or you could cut them by hand if you want to. You need this square shape to get the classic final look. Then you get out your form, whatever it is, and you need a pencil. I know what you're saying. Who is going to stay home and do all of this? Believe me, this is wonderful. Get all your friends to come over and help you. A new pencil. How about a dowel rod? You can find that in your hardware store. And then the technique is this. You take a piece of the dough, put it right there on the form, stick the pencil on it, and then you just roll this, you see? Right across the top, and you get this garganelli shape. Does it look like a little esophagus to you? Let me try it on this. And if you think it's going to stick, give a little bit of flour to whatever you're using, the pencil or the dowel rod. Again, I'll do it. And you want to do that loosely now. And as it goes across the form, of course, it takes on those lines. There's the second one. So that's how you make the shape, the garganelli shape. And now to cook garganelli, you must start with a large pot of water. This is just a general rule for all pasta that you're cooking. You want a pasta pot with an insert, just like you see here, because this allows you to lift it up, and you can then drain the pasta very easily. Four quarts of water for every pound of pasta you're cooking, and one tablespoon of salt goes in after the water comes to the boil. Now we put in the garganelli. And I just take them and dump them in, just like that. Now you give them a stir, give it a stir, put the cover back on, and allow that to come back to the boil. And when that does come back to the boil, then you want to check to see that they are cooked al dente, and then you can drain them. They look cooked to me, and then you see they go right in there. And sometimes you can add a little bit of water from the pasta pot if you want to help mix that sauce. So now you stir that all around and it's absolutely delicious. And of course we want to eat this immediately because this is our first course. Stir that around a little bit. And now here comes our homemade garganelli, that wonderful asparagus prosciutto. And of course, we have to give that a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano, another fabulous product.
from the region of Emilia Romagna. So, there you have it. Garganelli fatto a mano.